Здравствуйте, товарищи, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Crusader Kings 2. And I'm dropping you right into right into the middle of a war, and that is a war with the Bulgars. But before I get into why we're fighting, let me tell you what has happened since we last convened, and that is pretty much nothing. Um, fiddle around with some of my vassals, married off some of my children, you know, that sort of stuff. We fought a war against Denmark. It was a defensive war. They declared war on me. I, I pushed them back. Didn't get any territory out of it, but got some money and some prestige and so on and so forth. So... Back to why we're fighting a war against the Bulgars, uh, because I want to kill several war or several uh, birds with one stone. Uh, as I said last time, I'm trying to get this province back, and I was hoping that it would rebel because it occasionally has these like really epic, like 2,000 peasant revolts, and I was hoping that the Cumans would be so. Uh, preoccupied with fighting some of their own wars that they would not be able to actually get to uh, saving that territory and on multiple occasions they haven't but what happens is it goes to generally one of the random territories that is trying to declare its independence from the Cumans and then I try and swoop in and take it from that territory however the Cumans always seem to beat me to it so Basically, I'm going to try and surround it with my own territory, so if it were to ever revolt, it would join uh, our kingdom. Also, I figured out why we haven't been able to raise as many vassals as we could previously. That is because we have lower crown authority. Uh, and by lower crown authority, I mean it's like the minimal crown authority, or something along those lines. And I've been trying to change that, so... Uh, I went over to my laws and tried to change that, and turned out I needed support from the vassals to do that. And, um, I don't have enough support, so what I'm hoping to do is win this great victory, take a bunch of territories, give them to some vassals, and then that would, uh, persuade them, I suppose, to join our new, um, you know, our, our, our new, uh, order, if you will. Sorry, I was raising some peasant mercenaries to go deal with some uh, silly uh, issue somewhere. Some silly uh, peasant revolt, because I needed all the troops on the front line. So anyway, we're currently just about to mash into a large conflict with the Bulgars. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. I'm hoping to pretty much defeat them in one, you know, decisive blow. That would be lovely. And I have, uh, hopefully enough troops to be able to do that. Apparently this guy is quite upset. He's gonna send him a gift. It'll cost me. It'll cost me a lot. But I hope when all's said and done, I'll have enough ter or enough, uh, troops to really take it to these, these, uh, stinking Bulgars. defeat their armies on the field of battle and then follow that up with the, another uh, quick and decisive victory. And that looks like that's exactly what's happening. As their flanks continue to break and run. Their armies start to collapse. And they're in full and complete total. Uh, they're in complete and total retreat. So in the death count, we certainly killed a lot of stinking Bulgars, and I'm hoping to uh, smash their army completely and utterly, very quickly. send a gift to this guy just to diminish the chance that he might revolt but it looks like we were able to pretty uh, substantially um, 
defeat their armies, but they're, they're raising new troops. So I'm going to split my armies up and uh, have one army siege, and while well, the other army will uh, be a mobile force to stop uh, their armies from attacking us and also try and uh, swipe up some of these smaller armies and then once uh, those problems have been dealt with uh, begin to uh, siege themselves. So where are these guys going? Well, it looks like they're going nowhere fast, is where they're really going. But, uh, unfortunately, look, these sieges are probably going to take a long time. Which is unfortunate, but, the you know, the cost of warfare and all that crap... trying to raise more and more troops, but I don't think it's going to do them much good. Well, I mean, of course, I don't think it, it's going to do them much good. I am a little bit biased towards uh, my own side in this campaign. So long as I can keep one army in the field, preventing them from merging into their own cabal, I guess that'll be okay. And, uh, I'm going to send this army back to siege their capital. Because it looks like I've got this kind of sort of in the bag. Though I don't want to, you know, pump my chest and... You know, send out the victory march before uh, complete and total victory has been achieved. That's for sure. But we're doing pretty good. That's also quite evident. And I also think this... Uh, smaller auxiliary force right here it'll probably be enough to uh, deal with any troops they might themselves uh, muster up to fight the war so the peasants have revolted and blah 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 that's unfortunate I hate it when they do that Soon, he won't control Bulgar for long. That's for sure. Gonna have to break off some of these ar some of my army to go deal with these peasants. It'd be nice if my vassals would uh, stop fighting each other for like two seconds and uh, go and you know deal with some of these other larger existential threats that I've created myself. But. Um, Apparently, they're far more content to kill kill one another, or you know, help put down peasant revolts. But uh, and they always seem to all these their dumbass wars always seem to end inconclusively. It drives me nuts every single time. Oh, the wars ended inconclusively. You know what? <sighs> you guys, got to get a grip. You know, 
I'm okay if you guys keep fighting each other. If eventually uh, one of the, someone wins and someone loses, and then we can have this kind of, you know, coming together where we've resolved all these stupid petty issues. But apparently that's not the case. So it looks like we're about to take. Uh, Castle insert. I think that's shirt. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, let's uh, skip a couple frames ahead. All right, so we're back, and uh, you know, move some more troops around. Nothing much happened. Oh no! Um, you know, no decisive battles happen. Just kind of chasing uh, what's left of their. Uh, levees around and circles and all that good fun stuff. Uh, they seem to keep rise, raising like infinite amounts of troops and it's kind of it's kind of annoying. But uh, they're not exactly enough to stop my my war campaign. Oh no! Crap. Hmm. I've also managed to call my allies into battle. But I'm hoping that once we're able to take uh, this territory, we'll have enough war score to try and enforce our demands. Yeah, we've just only taken two, but we've defeated their armies like, several times in battle. We've got a, we've got another friggin' thing to deal with. All right, let's see if we can do it. Sweet, enforce the demands. Enforce the demands. Really, they're going to give up that much territory with only 63% war score? Well. This war was e a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, that's for sure. When, when, when is he, uh... When is the... So he's going to capitulate. Yes! Yes! Okay. That was awesome. Okay. This is perfect. This is perfect. So let's go deal with these other clowns. Throw him in, throw him in prison. But uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of crap to give out. Well, apparently a lot of the vassals hate me. Uh, in fact, every single one does. And I don't know how this has happened, but uh, regardless, let's uh, give out at least some of these. New territories. How, how the hell does everybody hate me all of a sudden? This. No, my son still hasn't taken the throne. So. I almost feel like this is like a glitch. Oh, maybe it's because I'm a heretic. Or is it because he's a heretic? I know I'm not a heretic, so what the hell's going on here? 
Hmm, this is weird. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's it? Okay, never mind. Just my, uh... Just my, uh, you know, demise is too big or whatnot. Anyway, let's let's start dealing out some of this land. Yeah, I should definitely do that before I restart the clock, because if not, then I might end up with a full-scale, like, civil war on my hands. So let me grant you the land title of, uh... You can have first insert, and you can have all lower titles. There you go. You can have Southern Earl. There we go. have the new town of Bulgar. So let's hope with this new conquest man, we could easily wipe out the Bulgars now. Just one more. Who wants it? Who wants it? Uh, not the guy in jail. He can't have it. This guy. Because he hates me the most for some reason. Okay. Have we resolved all that tension? Oh, well, looks like we resolved an awful lot of it. Do we have enough support? Oh, we, we don't know yet. We have to, uh... End the civil war. Okay, all right. Who's the heretic? I thought for like the third time I got rid of this heretic. He keeps like worming his way back in. Can improve diplomatic negotiate diplomatic relations with the poles. There, have fun. These guys declared holy war against, and just so long as it's not me. So, with that war, or, or with these, uh, is getting wrapped up rapidly. Let me talk to you guys about uh, about an experience I've been having, and that's the experience of being part of the NDP leadership race. And that has really been that's really been something for me. That's just really it's really been an experience. I've met now four four of the seven candidates. Uh, the race is almost over. And I just, it's just been amazing just to be part of the whole process. I've had so much fun meeting so many new people, you know, meeting fellow members of the party, you know, talking shop and, uh, you know, meeting high level profile uh, politicians. And it's really been, really been phenomenal. But uh, today I probably had the most amazing experience of the, the, the entire, uh, the entire time. And that was when... Um, I met 
NDP uh, leadership candidate Nathan Cohen today, and I, you know, I, I asked them a question that I'm afraid that now that the NDP is official opposition, we're getting this whole leadership race has created the pin, the sort of perception that the NDP exists only for the sole purpose of defeating uh, Stephen Harper. And that to me is a little bit uh, depressing because, you know, I feel that the, uh, the party means so much more to me than just defeating uh, the current government. And I'm, I'm really afraid of, of that is all that the NDP is going to be framed as and it will become sort of empty and hollow and so on and so forth. So I, so I asked him about that and he, he gave me a, he gave me a, a really, uh, you know, thoughtful and, uh, and good response, you know, basically saying, uh, you know, listen, uh, you know, it's, it's great um, for... So it's great to have uh, everybody united and everybody um, coming together on a positive message, but sometimes the positive message uh, isn't exactly a motivator that, uh, you know, I can have a... I, you know, I can have a rally when I said, and I say, you know, we're going to talk about... We're going to talk about uh, hope, I think is what he said. And, you know, people might be kind of intrigued by that, but it's not going to get a lot of uh, people to come to a rally. But if, you know, we start talking about, uh, you know, let's take on, um, you know, X, Y, or Z, then people might come out to the rally. So I thought that was, you know, a, a good response. But then uh, somebody in the crowd asked me, what, uh, okay, so what does the NDP mean to you? And I said, um, well, you know, that's a much more complicated question, but if I were to kind of distill it down quickly and evenly, then I would say, basically, the NDP, to me, is summed up in Jack Layton's final letter, that the NDP means to me sort of love, hope, and optimism. And after saying that, literally everybody, you know, in the crowd, and they all stood up and gave me a standing ovation. And it was an amazing feeling. That was the first standing ovation of my life. You know, I'm, I'm very used to, uh, you know, just sitting here and obviously, you know, I'm sitting and, and talking to you guys right now and unfortunately I can't see you guys as much as I would love to have that opportunity. So I'm, I'm pretty sure maybe some of you over something I said sometime stood up in your chair and were like, yeah, that's awesome, standing ovation, but uh, I mean, you know, uh, it's a whole different experience when, when everybody in the crowd stands up and just starts and starts clapping for you, and it was amazing. It was it was literally like one of the best feelings of my life, and I, I can't really uh, describe how powerful it was. So that was that was quite something. So, are you done, my friend? You are done. All right, now let's send the vassals home after a long, long war. Yeah, our the gentlemen are, are a little upset. Now, let's see if I have, how do I have even less authority? gained some, some votes, and by some I mean one vassal, but oh, oh, more people are trickling in, maybe I'll just give them a little bit of time after uh, the negative effects of the war uh, have run their course, maybe then people will be a little bit more inclined to uh, support my move to consolidate more power around the monarchy. Oh, man. Just when I thought we could send everybody home. Those goddamn peasants rise up in our newly conquered territories. So let's send men over there and deal with that. So who are these guys? Who the hell is it? are these? Who is? 
howling off. I'm trying to find where these guys are from. Oh, okay. It looks like one of my own vassals has taken up the war against the Bulgars. That's interesting. One of my own border territories has declared a holy war against them. So I wonder what happens if she wins, if she'll get that territory herself, or will it become part of, part of my own, sort of, uh, part of our realm, our ever-growing and ever-expanding uh, realm. I gotta, I gotta get these vassals in line, man. This is just becoming unacceptable. Wow, okay, well, looks like, uh... Dealing with these peasants might be a little bit more complicated than I expected. So, maybe I should send my new... S what's it, what's his face? It's press revolts in these new territories. Where I'm constantly gonna have to be having my armies raised to deal with these you know, these upstart peasants. And unfortunately Not like the previous, like these guys have been, uh, like this revolt has been lasting for ages, but they don't have enough men to actually do anything about it. See, look, here we go. Here's here's the kind of peasant revolts I'm talking about. I'm hoping someone told me I'm arbitrary, and I wish to change that. Well, sucks to be you, doesn't it? How old are you? You're fucking 71. It's time to die, dude. He's not ready for his own. I thought I already gave out a ton of uh, a ton of land. Hey! All right. They finally, they finally let it go through. Uh, keep rid of the swans, and I'll send you some money, and that'll deal with that. All right. Our now laws for limited crown authority have been accomplished. Yay. I knew my plan would work. Man, that was like the one of the most perfectly executed plans. I could not have asked for that to have gone any better. Got a ton of new territories. Um, this area is revolting, and hopefully uh, they'll be able to take all these territories before the Cumans arrive. Although, well, even if they do, uh, even if they are able to stop them from, you know, taking the territory, it'll revolt again and again and again and again until eventually they're not able to deal with it. So I got a ton of new territories. Uh, we're able to increase our share of power. Apparently I can't... Uh, increase any... or change any more laws. I guess you can only change one law at a time. Uh, this is my favorite song in the game. I love this song. Uh, 
Well, at least I can summon my own vassals to, or summon my own armies to deal with these peasant revolts. Although I'd wish, you know, the vassals are so gung-ho on killing each other. I wish that when, at some point, their own territories would start to revolt against them, they'd go and deal with it. But they're, you know, too busy dealing with more important things like taking their, you know, their own territory from one another. I guess there was a lot of bad blood. I wonder if I can... Oh, yeah, I was going to see if I can offer these guys... Um... If these guys would finally become part of uh, the Russian kingdom. Hooray! This wife, this wife is also crazy. She's been trying to plot to kill random people this whole time. Apparently, poor, uh, what's this guy? Is this Mitslav? Mitslav just can't, he can't get a break. Both his wives have been complete and total nut bars. deal with another. Oh, well, the Cumans are here to put down their own revolt. Who might revolt? This guy? What does he want? A likely 6%. Just give him a bribe, and he'll be he'll be fine. It's good to be king. You can just bribe people who would try and rise against you, and just throw around your endless treasuries, and you'll be okay. not gonna happen. You end your plot right now. Elective monarchy? Shameful. Shameful. What are you guys thinking? See, look at this. I just defended all your lands for you again. I'm really interested, though, to see how this turns out. If, what happens if she is able to uh, take over what's left of the Bulgars her, uh, herself. Hooray! Poland has now uh, increased their opinion of us, so that's good news. What do the what do the Danes think of us? Apparently, they don't like us very much. But that's because we kicked their ass in a war. So, God, this guy is just eternal. Seventy-two or seventy-two for uh, you know, in the medieval ages. That's a long time, especially considering that this guy. Through his entire life, he used to just be uh, the king of uh, Novgorod, but now he's the king of the entirety of the Russian kingdoms. So he's he's been ruling since he was like, you know, 19 or so years old, and now he's on his deathbed. But he's got quite an empire to uh, to be proud of. Still need some time to start replenishing our manpower, though. They've been quite diminished over various wars. How is it in turn? How is our revolt risk? These areas are still really angry. It's because they're different religions. 